Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about the last voyage of the Demeter. I gotta say, I was excited for this, which is odd for me. I have, I've been like a little turned off towards um, the vampire type movies, but it was October, going through my Oktoberfest horror movies. I watched like The Nun 2, The Boogeyman, but when I saw this, I was kind of excited. I had this vision in my mind of a great movie isolated on a big ship going across the waters and you're, uh, you know, my first guess, you're transporting Dracula, the original vampire. You know, I think it was actually called Dracula, The Voyage of the Demeter. And I gotta say, the acting is top-notch in some aspects. I mean, this is one of those movies that I think is going to suffer from trying to make the special effect creature. But it almost comes together for me. And, you know, and starting this, I'm thinking at the end of this, I don't know if it's going to be a recommendation. Even for me with a rewatchability, watch it twice, just to get the understanding. I found myself a little... I don't know, thrown off by how we're, you know, progressing the plot and moving forward. We've got this deep, you know, story plot and we're getting into the, um, you know, the minutiae of everything. And it just doesn't feel like it coalesces right. And when we get to the actual monster vampire, I felt kind of disappointed. And I don't know if that, you know, goes across... Like the movie for where I was in a horror movie mood and I'm excited for this, which was odd. I think my peak in this type of well, vampires and stuff was like Underworld. So I love that fucking movie. Even the sequels that kind of petered out. I had an excitement for the vampires and werewolves and one thing, but eventually it gets too much and you're just overloaded and you wait and something catches your eye and you're like, oh, that excitement is ignited again. And I am such a horror fan that when I saw this, I said, oh, again, in my mind, this is, this could be amazing. The plot of this movie, okay, um, you know, wreckage of a ship washes ashore, and then it goes, you know, a month earlier, and you're seeing the people, a doctor, and I gotta say, um, the acting is pretty good. Corey Hawkins as uh clemens might be the best standout but you you always got um you know what's that guy uh liam cunningham he's just amazing in like everything i think he's like a game of thrones uh and you're almost there you you feel i don't know this is a weird one i i, I think it's the blend of excitement and disappointment that is kind of coloring this so maybe this is one of those this will eventually be one of those you know you gotta watch it and i would recommend it but it just feels i don't know odd again this is i think i did this on morbius and maybe another one someone took what they had and tried to make the best of it so maybe the editor of this gets props now the director andre alverdal I'm not too familiar with, although I did enjoy like the Troll Hunter movie back in the day. But maybe the editor gets props for this, uh, you know, someone who put it together, casting, you know, <clears throat> you've got a period piece type thing. Um, you know, we're trying to get the voyage and the personal conflicts, the struggles people are going through, whether it be race, color. Um, you know, just the time period, which what it brings on its own. I think it's, you know, kind of interesting. And you're going to interject uh, crate breaking and, oh, what's going on on the ship? We are, you know, first it led to the animals on board being killed. But I, it's just something about it feels phony. And again, this could just be me envisioning the monster on, you know, when you look at some of the cutscenes or pictures stills from 
the first Alien movie. It, the monster kind of looked stupid in a sense, or Jaws, on how it broke and it wasn't working right. They had to use it for certain angles. It looked like rubber, etc. for lots of movies, I'm sure. And they make it work. This doesn't make it work. I don't feel that I was immersed in a real threat type thing. Again, the acting is good. You're not... Um, I almost am thinking now, would I have rather have just seen a movie about traveling on a ship and it being a psycho murderer? A real human being, like, doing these killings, blame it. It almost crossed my mind because we saw getting these... Um, you know, night after night, things are going on. Um, you know, uh, they find a girl, uh, a stowaway, which is typical type thing, a movie trope type. And it worked. But does this, oh, you know there's a monster on board. It uh, feeds on the blood of humans. And you got a Dracula hunting the crew. It just doesn't feel like an all-around solid movie. There's so many parts in here that want to stand out, but don't feel like they've accomplished things. Even when they decide, oh, you know, when when we're getting to the, you know, we got you know things that happen that are really dark in the movie, and it's really going for, you know, not playing around, and you know, this isn't going to be sparkles, vampires, or Lots of jokes in between. Again, like I said, the undercurrent of this movie, I was interested. We've got a timepiece, uh, you know, type movie. You know, this old rickety ship going from one place to another. You know a vampire or Dracula is going to decimate the ship. And here's the journey we're going along. What, it, what were the trials of these uh, crew? And is just not the right blend, maybe? And the creature just disappointed me. You had aspects of this that could have really worked. And I don't know. Again, I think it's more my psychological thing. Like, I don't know what the critical reception is for this movie type thing. Although, when I open it up and I look, um, you know, when I just get ready to do the podcast, and I'm going to, you know, oh, you know, it's like a half and half type thing. I'm going to say this is maybe a me thing. Um, it just, I think you could have tightened this better, made it more introspective of some of the characters, but in a, in a way where it relates more to what's going on on the ship. You know, it, it, it has a decent atmosphere at times. You are... You know, like I said, you're kind of interested on where this is going. But, you know, Dracula's hunting the crew just doesn't feel right. I don't feel the, um, you know, the peril reaching that limit where it should be. The doctor's amazing what he's trying to do and the conflict, you know, give him uh, blood transfusion. He's trying to explain to them and everybody's accusing you know, whatever, but when you know there's a fucking monster, even if you're going to call it just a monster, and you're not labeled, oh, it's a vampire, it doesn't feel right, it just doesn't coalesce into a puzzle that all the pieces start to fit together, and in your brain, you're like, oh, wow, this is interesting, because you know you can go somewhere else with this, right, it's just how Dracula crossed the oceans, or moved from one place to another, and a lot of movies do this with, you know, you got to bring the earth that he was in, um, obviously he's going to only be able to hunt at night, but you're on a fucking boat and, and the logic, the pieces that follow one another, again, just doesn't coalesce into a really good movie for me. Uh, I've talked about, um, I wish there was a, you know, uh, a thing on gross and you know, what, how much movie the money makes. And I don't want to factor that in, because there are some low-budget movies that are just fucking outstanding. Uh, you know, they're rare, probably. Um, is this an attempt at that? You know, I'm gonna make a movie for $40 million, and, you know, oh, if I make $80 million, but, oh, it only made $30 million. It, it It mucks the enjoyment factor of how you're gonna 
judge this movie and you're talking to friends and you're like, oh, I was interested in, oh, you did a podcast on that movie. How'd you like it? And I go, missed opportunity. I have a interest. I'm drawn into the premise. I was just in the mood the whole month of October, that type of thing. And Halloween and watching a horror movie at night, you're trying to. And you're just getting into the mood and the vibe. Holy shit, I'm going to watch a really cool vampire Dracula movie. And it happens to be on a subject like I was kind of interested in. Like, what could happen on a big rickety wooden ship when, you know, it's not that you're just transporting him and he never gets out of the coffin and his minions do the work. Like I said, in my head, I started going through, you know, you could have just made this one of the people is a real psychopath, you know, a Renfield type character. And Dracula never really comes out. I think it would have worked much better as a tighter horror movie, building the suspense it was, dealing with the um, elements that it was, you know, progressing through the movie. I mean, here you have this um, doctor going through a whole bunch of shit, and the whole cast is like waking up to this fucking nightmare. And I'm not believing it for that. For that. And it's the trappings, not the particular performance of an actress or an actor. I, you know, I know why people don't think Morbius is a good movie, and I, I don't think it's a good movie in that sense, but I enjoyed it, and I, again, that has my bias of love of comic books, and you don't have much joy, or it could be just a mindset I'm in, but I try to factor it in with, like, holy shit, I'm excited, and, and my disappointment, and, oh, this is a obvious special effect type shot here, did they even use a human at all? I'm wondering now, if there's even... Someone who, yeah, you know, I'm going to, you have to assume, because they got the actor, Javier Botet Lopez. Um, there are people like, you know, in different stages. Again, this is a weird one for me. The Last Voyage of the Demeter, horror movie, vampire, Dracula. It has a particular angle. It has a, a, a interesting through line in the sense of a time period movie where you're traveling across and you're getting to meet the characters and this is superstitious, you know, you're uh, African-American and what's going on, you're a doctor, what? You were in the whole element that, uh, all the elements that encompass this movie feel interesting to me. This is a, a one that sits on the fence with me. How, could it have been better with a guy in a suit who, you know, I felt the weight of him, his breathing, or his lack of breathing, I guess, since it's Dracula. But, you know, when you're slowly introducing the character, and he's in shadow, and he's popping out, and he's making quick kills, to the point where he's outright a CGI creature, because you can do that these days, just didn't work out for me as a total thing, but... As I'm doing this, I'm thinking I would watch another one. This could be a movie that can course correct an issue or two. But when you make the, you know, the, the weight of this, like kids are involved and there's this dark dread that just keeps mounting, I really was looking to buy into it and really get taken by this ride and trying to just figure out what the you know, premise of, you know, where my pockets would go with this, I'm a little lost in that. Um, even, like I said, I watched The Nun, too, and Boogeyman. There were direct causes, causes for a movie that just annoys me or um, really aggravates me or just does something that just takes me out of the movie or suspension of disbelief, that type of thing. But I don't know how to really judge a movie like this, and if I'm doing scores, is it going to be what? A 2 out of 5? Is it right down the middle? Again, I think this is a movie where, if you didn't have such a good editor, and you know, uh, the music, and you know, how are you going to set this time period movie? I think this movie would have been a very bad movie. It just has the markings of that. But it doesn't feel... Exorcist Believer fucking bad where it's just a money grab and you throw in fucking a star from the original series and you're trying to it's like you just insulted me 
this was just like, oh, I got my excitement up. It was just, it was let down by where it was going. But I see the traits of the movie that, you know, could have been a fucking really good movie. I only had one friend. I said, oh, you should, you know, if you're in the mood, you know, watch it. And he's, he just gave like a, ugh, look. And he's in that, because we watched every fucking Underworld movie. And all, you know, we're big horror nuts. And just sharing the experience with somebody. Well, when you go into the movies, there's an element of, oh, you know, I'm not in the mood to go see a fucking Dracula movie, you know, vampire. But again, like I said, in my head, I did feel um, like I was pulled in by the trappings of the movie, the enticements of it, what it could have been, what it might have been. This is maybe another thing where in your head you make a better movie than what is shown. But that happens a lot, and I think a good movie really, you know, it gives you a kind of unexpected things and lets you go, oh, okay. Uh, I talk, uh, I might mention it a lot, but the Guardians of the Galaxy movie, not what I wanted to see, not the characters I wanted, the whole fucking jokey premise with music. It's a fun movie, and it's good. I... You know, I got turned around in the movie. I'm not going to hate what they did with Drax, although he's not Drax. Like, that type of thing. You, you have good writing. This has some of that in there. I don't know. Could look at this as a missed opportunity. But again, it's music, movie industry, right? You got budgets and you're going to get shit on. So we have a COVID type stage of events leading into movie theaters kind of dying down. You kind of know this market, so to speak, is going to be flooded with, you know, movies that are made in isolation. I'm surprised there aren't a whole string of movies where it's just people on the phone and you find a couple of those here and there. And it's interesting takes, but you're in a fucking boat. You're traveling across the ocean. Always a hazardous thing. Just in the time, you know, even now, you want a fucking yacht, you know, you got GPS, like, all that shit. So I'm kind of interested in that trapping, and my brain's going, wow, you're trapped on a boat. A rickety old boat, you know, like I said, a time thing. And you have crew, and you have just the normal shit that's happening in the world, and the doctor, and what is this thing in the stowaway. You're going to add an element of a fucking monster on the shit. Now, the one kind of thing they, they kept, and I was like, okay, you're going to do this reveal, was that, spoiler, Dracula can fly like a bat. <laughs> and it kind of fucks up their plan in a way. And I just started laughing, like, okay, I get it. Like, you don't know everything, and you have... But when you go, okay, look, I don't care. Like, make it out. Like, there's three of us left. One of us uh, four, but one sick and whatever. We have to... Fuck this guy up in the daytime, in some aspect. I guess if you're believing some, you know, the story that's being unfolded, even if the act one, two, three type formula is a little weird here. You know, you started off with doing a flashback, you're just showing the ship is fucked up. I found it just a little jarring here and there. You could have made this work in, a, in another fashion. I just. You know, the fucking thing can fly. <laughs> it, 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 you know, you're getting off on a boat, and you're going to go get away from this fucking thing. Because that's what people would fucking do. Like, look, I'm going to take this fucking thing. We're going to get off. Let's burn this fucking thing it, in the daytime. There's no concrete fucking answer here. That in my brain is screaming, just do this. But, again, I'm not a fucking nautical fucking master. Uh, you know... Oh, Joe, it's it's 18-something, you know. You're dead. You can't get on a fucking boat and or a little raft type thing, a little, you know, and you're not going to make it anywhere. Okay. But I got a fucking monster that's draining people's blood and turning them into fucking vampires. Uh, it's just a frustrating, you know, experience. And I think it's... Just made a little worse by, oh, I'm watching a CGI creature that 
at times feels like it's just drawn in. It doesn't feel like it's um, a real weighty thing. And you had all the darkness. You had the surroundings that you really could have, when you did try, I guess, put those elements in there. It's so easy to just have the, you know, a shadow and then it, you know, you, they did that with the Halloween, you, you know, Michael Myers is just standing there, but you so slowly notice that he's there. This movie tries to get that element, but it just, I don't know, is it CGI too shiny, too slimy looking? In some scenes it looks great. Oh, that's what the actor, you know, wearing the thing. And I, you know, you're looking at, like I said, a lot of elements, the pieces that come together that are just compound little things that annoy me. But I'm going to go out and say that, as a casual viewer, you're watching Netflix or whatever you're doing, and you watch this movie. I don't think you're going to be mad or upset. And in my brain, I'm like, okay, they did something with a certain budget. Someone tried to make the best of what they could. And you're just looking at, um, you know, it didn't all come together the way it was envisioned. And I think there's a... Uh, a place for this movie in in that sense again uh, even doing this like there's nothing that's glaringly oh you you fucked it up you know um i mean you know what you they do go a little much in certain you know i don't give a lot of plots and storyline stuff but there, there are angles where they really go forward and look you're gonna make this dark you're gonna make it um you know, try to have really fucking deep things where, you know, kids' lives are involved and um, people have a history and and when you're, you know, fleshing out your characters and stuff, you're like, oh, wow, you might be interested in it. But where does it go? Um, you know, and I'm sure the guy who did all the, you know, the special effects is just looking like, oh, okay, I... You know, we did the best we could do, and I don't know. I look at something like this and just see a missed opportunity. I'm sure there are people out there who are going to like it, because I don't think it's a glaringly, oh, my God, you're crazy for loving This movie's fucking dumb. It's stupid. It's weighty. It has the atmosphere. It goes for dark themes and really puts you in a situation like, I'm on a fucking ship, and there's an ocean everywhere. So give them credit for the acting, some of the shots of, like me believing they're on a ship in the water. Um, but people are people, and I guess people do stupid fucking things. Uh, you know, it's just one of those movies that a little bit more goes right, and you're fucking, you've got a classic fucking Dracula horror movie. It's just, it almost was there for me. I don't look at a lot of media beforehand, for the most part. Um, you do get, you know, I watched the fucking X-Men 97 trailer. I'm so excited for that. But, you know, there's um, no deep dive for me until right before I decide I'm going to do the podcast on it. And then I'll, you know, do my wiki, IMBD. You might want to find a little sp a funny story or something um, or interesting note about the movie. And I'm looking through this, and I'm like, okay, well, I can see why uh, the critical response is what it is. Um, uh, you know, it just doesn't give me that, wow, this came together well. At the end of the movie, you're like, huh. It, it feels more like you're looking at this going, you know, I could trim this, take this out. My brain is already making up a better movie for me. I don't know what that indicates in a, you know, a movie like this. I'm sure people are like, oh, no, you know, they had the most practical effects in the movie. Like, so there are lots of people in makeup and doing the right thing. It just maybe doesn't come off right. It didn't feel like I was really immersed. I don't feel the super threat and, um, you know, there's a lot of, like I said, dark stuff going on in this movie. It, you know, plods forward, and it's supposed to build up this, mom you know, m momentum, but this feeling that's growing on you of, holy shit, up on the ocean, on, a, again, a fucking old boat, just doing my shit, trying to deal with the fucking 
challenges of life in whatever fucking year it is, and oh shit, there's a fucking monster on board? <laughs> so, I wanted to like this. I wanted to be super excited. Uh, I don't think I'm going to um, convince a lot of people to watch this that are just not in the mood to watch um, horror movies or vampires in general, like one of my friends. So I get that. You just, you know, you're not going to get the, the draw for that. But as someone who was excited, you looking to put it into the, um, to get into this movie, I found things I really was into, and it almost felt like now you are the elements of your movie are just bothering each other. Now maybe it was, oh, you know what? Let this uh, scene go on for about five minutes before you bring in the shock or the jump scare, or that happens. You know, I'm thinking now, probably fucking getting like the non in like movies that can be like a waste or a, a cash draw. Um, you know, building on the success of the others and insidious movies. This is not that really, right? It's hey, I got a new take. I got a take on Dracula that was like, what about that journey they made, and what happened on that ship? And I think it starts well there. Um, again, some good acting, um, music. The, the uh, I I kind of did believe I was on a boat, and you know when. A lot of movies you gaze out or characters are there and they're looking around. No, it, it works on that. It's just, um, uh, movies are hard to make. I don't think this is a shit fest in any, any aspect, you know, for that. I do like aspects of this movie. Like, oh, you know, because I know it's, it's, I think it's based off a book, right? Let me see. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Captain's Log. And I really didn't, you know, uh, you know, I didn't really understand some of the elements where if you're going to bring up certain subject matter and delve into it, and I get it, you know, everything's interrupted and tossed on its fucking ear because, hey, we have a monster on the fucking ship. And maybe that's where it goes wrong for me. It's um, it's just uh, not the quality value I would have been wowed by. It just felt, again, now, as I'm doing this, like someone tried to make do with what they got, and they should be given praise. There's elements of this I think people are really going to enjoy, but I wouldn't put myself out there and go, you know, give it a shot, you know, I do like people's opinions on it, because I think this is a movie, like, I would watch a continuation, it might even make me re-watch the movie again, and find elements that, um, the, that make me want to see where it might go, because you obviously got a fucking massacre, the whole fucking ship comes to port, like, you know, it's part of the opening of the movie, really. And you don't know if, like, oh, four people are still on a dinghy somewhere, uh, you know, when it starts. But you do get that knowledge. Like, this is the voyage of a doomed fucking ship. I want to be fucking caught up in that element. Like, I'm trapped on this fucking ocean everywhere. I don't know how many fucking, what are they were called, dinghies or little boats they have. But you're not going to be able to get the whole fucking crew off. And it just comes to that realization and when they decide to do what they're going to do and make the plot move forward it kind of it kind of dilutes the heavy themes they were going with and it just didn't make that awesome you know ingredients that just really highlights everything all the ingredients come together but i'm not going to shit on the movie i think it has some really interesting um, elements to it. Like, it, it dared to go dark, make it a brooding movie, which I was going for. Um, Giving me trapped on a boat. Like, it works on some elements that are, um, you know, they should get a little praise for that. I'm pretty surprised that, you know, the music didn't shock me. And, um, you know, some of the shots in this movie are amazing. 
you had the elements uh, I'm I, I'm not gonna shit on it I think the last voyage of the Demeter is a good indication of like a low budget movie you know trying to use what we have now to make a really good story and give you that horror element but we can go back to like Cloverfield when it made people throw up and I, lo- I love watching that movie and so there are changes of things and like I said COVID and new techniques what they're doing I look at a movie coming out in these day this day and age as you know changing the norm in a sense I don't think at the time of like producing these movies and getting ready in the time period you know they're going okay well we've got to make 400 million at the box office now they still fucking do that with like comic book movies but you can feel that at the height of all the shit it was forgiven you know give me a fun movie get me through the times i'm in i'm in the mood to watch a fucking you know quirky witty fucking fun superhero movie or i'm in the mood to watch a dark dreary fucking dracula movie and I'm in the fucking ocean, again, on some fucking rickety boat, and I gotta cross the fucking ocean, and you've got a captain, and whatever, and you've got people on board, and everybody's got their shit going on, and oh my god, a fucking monster's on our ship. What the fuck do we do? And it's hunting them, and again, once those elements start coming in, and my brain is going, okay, well, you know, you just rip the fucking, you don't need the top of your ship, rip the, like, you certain things that are going to go and your brain is screaming like, oh, I want the disc to last longer. Let's let this breathe. This is where you would have gotten me. The, 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 the focus on these two characters talking about this was like, you know, really getting me into it. But you got to move the movie along. You got to get to your carnage and your fucking, you know, full-blown creatures, terrifyingly, just fucking unstoppably unstoppable just and i think that's where it kind of just fizzles for me i would have rather more of a creature barely seen um working on the elements of what the characters are bringing forth and their struggles like i said this could be just a time period piece of a psychopath on a boat right a ship going across the ocean and you're using the lore of dracula and maybe it turned out to be a renfield it then at the end, you one guy's like survives and the fucking <clears throat> vampire is shown. No, this thing is shown in scenes. You fucking see it like flying, and I, it should have built up to a holy shit. Um, you know what James Cameron did with Aliens, where you have fucking watching them battles, lots of them, and they're getting shot, and it just didn't culminate and bring the heights of what it showed, but. I'm definitely not going to shit on the movie. Um, I think it's a decent movie on its own, thinking about the trappings of the time and what it's trying to do. Is it a huge success? No, but I'm not going to, you know, I would definitely recommend it for people who want to watch a horror Dracula movie. And like me, you were kind of interested because, you know, we all have different aspects. This is not a red fucking sign glaring, stay away from this movie, it sucks. So, on that note, I think it's, uh, you know, something people might want to watch and are going to get something out of it, for sure. I just don't think it wowed and had this spectacular, you know, they're just looking at the thumbnail I'm using for the, my image on my um thing, and it's just standing there. It should be fucking creepy. It, it should be, you know, and I'm sure they did their best and stuff. I just... Would like a movie that I could get super excited about, recommend, and, you know, uh, I, I would, in this stage of me doing this, recommend it for horror fans and people who are interested in that premise. So, the setup is, you know, old rickety ship, you know, timepiece type movie, you gotta go across the ocean, you've got traumas and things you gotta deal with in general, right? Fucking food, uh, Everything, you know, navigation, storms. Oh, this person's an asshole, that person's an asshole. And we got a fucking racist and whatever's going on. And then all of a sudden, oh, there's a fucking monster. Dracula is being transported on the ship. And that unfolds. If that interests you, I don't think you're going to be disappointed and get mad at the movie. It'll be one of those things that adds to something. Sure, I, I did enjoy that aspect of it. I was looking forward to it. 
So give it a shot. The last voyage of the Demeter. Um, decent horror movie had the potential to really wow me and just kind of didn't. And that's not really. Um, again, I've watched enough uh, low budget movies to really. Be wild again. I did, I did one here. It was a little Cosmos or something like that. Um, really, the love and passion's there. You can see it, and it just didn't really culminate. And this is someone who really took the best elements they could and presented the best movie that they could at the time. And the formula just doesn't drive with me all the way. But I think people will get something out of the movie. So, hope everybody's doing well. My best to you and yours. Take care.